So you want to use the Neutron Highway. Well, today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about using it efficiently without blowing your ship up in the process. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort worthy of the Imperial Cutter. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. If you're new to the game, or maybe if you've really ventured outside the bubble, you may have heard about the Neutron Highway but never really used it or never really know what it is. And today I'm going to show you everything you need to know. So first of all, the Neutron Highway is a method of jumping where you use Neutron Stars or White Dwarfs to supercharge your FSD, which is going to increase your jump range, allowing you to cover great distances in a short amount of time. However, it comes with a few risks, but we're going to go over those as we uh, run through it here. First of all, before you even set out and begin to consider using this method of jumping, you need to do a few pre-flight checks. First of all, you should make sure that you have a fuel scoop fitted. You can't supercharge your FSD if you don't have a fuel scoop. Secondly, you should go to your ships, go down to your preferences and make sure orbit lines are set to ON. We don't want to have you drop accidentally into the exclusion zone around a neutral star since that can spell some serious trouble with overheating and damage to your ship. Now we're talking about modules, make sure you also have an AFMU fitted because your modules frame sheet drive will take damage when do it, so you'll need to repair it in the process. So fit at least one, preferably two, um, depending on how far you're planning to travel. The last pre-flight check you need to do is to head into the map, make sure the stars are colored by star class. And I recommend you highlight all the scoopable stars, so that would be O to M stars, as well as non-sequence stars. Non-sequence stars, of course, being um, the neutron stars that we're going to be using. Because, as I said, neutral stars are not scoopable, and that means that we will have to go to some of the other stars in order to get, um, get fuel off those when we eventually begin to run out of fuel. So having those highlighted already now makes it a little bit easier to detect those systems so you don't accidentally jump to a non scoopable star and you waste time and fuel on that. So once all your pre-flight checks is done, it's time to plot our route. For that, there's a very handy uh, tool here called the Neutron Router. And I'm going to link it in the description, so you can go and you can use this yourself. First thing you've got to target, uh, type in your uh, starting system. Um, I'm currently in Shirata Desra. I'm going to put that in there. Then we're going to type our destination. Let's say we want to go to Colonia. Let's put that in there. Secondly, we're going to type in the jump range. That's a base jump range of your ship. Um, I think mine is 69, if I recall correctly. And there's an efficiency slider, you can slide that around, that determines how much you're going to deviate off the straight line between the two uh, targets. Um, and it can affect your, your jump range, uh, your number of jumps slightly, but not a lot. So um, let's go ahead and let's uh, click Calculate, and it should fairly quickly come up with a, um, um, with a result here. And we can see here that uh, we have a total of uh, 94 stars in our, um, in our route, and we'll have to do a total of 104 jumps in order to reach Colonia. Not too bad. So the first thing you're going to do is to just click the small copy icon here, head into the game, plug it into the map, and let's get going. We can see we should have around seven jumps to go. And there we are. Look at that little beauty. We arrived at our first neutron star. Now we need to go and supercharge our FSD. And this is the part that a lot of people um, get wrong or where it often uh, where often people end up dropping into uh, to the star. So what you want to do is try to get you in kind of a, a position where you are 90 degrees on to the uh, to the arms coming out. And I'm going to quickly show you here what you want to do. Now you want to come in towards the main star and then turn off making sure you don't hit the exclusion zone and then come out and fly radially outwards inside the cone. Um, and you're going to do that very slowly and then as soon as your frame sheet drive is supercharged, you're going to drop out of the, uh, of the cone again. And, um, and then you should be good to go to the next system. Okay, so let's try to do this in um, practically here. So we're going to go here and we're going to begin to have a quick look at that exclusion zone that popped up there. So we're going to turn away from the star, come in above the, the cones here. And you can see I'm going very slowly here. I'm not going very quickly. 
and I'm slowly pointing my ship downwards into the cones. And as soon as I hit into the cone, the ship should begin to move around. And there we go. It's supercharged, so I can now throttle up. And I can pull out of the cone. There we go. And we're safely out of the cone. Let's get some distance to the star. And we can now see, if we go over here to my ship, that my current jump range, look at that, it has now got quadrupled. You got, from neutral stars, you get a 300% bonus on top. So that's a multiplier of 4. And on White Dwarfs, you get a 50% bonus, so that's a multiplier of 1.5. So I just got four times my jump range, and I can now jump almost 280 light years in a single jump. Next up, you would go in, and you would select the next system in your route from the home page. Then we're going to open up the galaxy map, and we're going to type that in. Now we can see the system that I'm going through here is too far away from where I am right now. You can see I could only jump, was it 278 light years, but this is about 100 light years too far away. But if you make sure that you have enabled use jet cone boost here, and you then plot a route to it, what you can see it will do is it will automatically find a system that is close to your maximum jump range, right there, and then it will show you the route for the next few jumps. And this is where it comes in handy to have only scoopable stars, because when you have a star that's too far away, it's a good opportunity to top off your fuel tanks, um, which you otherwise wouldn't be able to do, because if you're just jumping from neutral star to neutral star to neutral star, you wouldn't be able to, um, to fuel scoop. So in that case, let's say that I could actually reach this star here, but I didn't have the... Um, um, but I have the fuel to get there, but I would need to refuel. I'm getting low on fuel. What I would then do is I would find a star really close, like that one there, and then I would jump to that instead, fuel scoop off that star, and once I have a full fuel tank, I would just took the small jump into the system right here where my neutral star is, use the jet con boost, and then continue on the route. So um, let's go ahead and um, let's line ourselves up with... Um, with the next system in route, and you can see here in the, in the fuel gauge down in the lower corner, we don't use any more fuel than we would on a normal jump. So we get four times the range, we use the same fuel as we would use if we had just jumped one-fourth of the way. So here we are, 277 light years. Let's charge it up, and let's jump. So while you're sitting here on your fuel star and you scoop some fuel anyway, it's a good idea to keep an eye on your frame switch drive. You can see here that I've taken a little bit of damage. I'm now down to 98%. And that's because we are pressing our frame switch drive over the um, capacity where it was supposed to be, um, to be doing. So it will take damage when you do these kind of jumps. And that's why the AFMUs is really, really important that you fit those. When your frame to drive drops below, I would say 80%, that's when I would recommend you begin to repair it. Now, this is just my bubble bus, so I don't have an AFMU on this one, but you would go in here and you would click the repair option. You would probably want to drop out of, um, of Super Cruise before you do this, because otherwise you'll do an emergency job, I think. Um, if you can't even do it in Super Cruise. But at least make sure you go out, um, drop out of Super Cruise, and then you can repair your FSD, get it back up. Don't let it drop down too low, otherwise you'll begin to see malfunctions. But all that's really left to do now is to just move on to the next neutron star in uh, in our route. Do the same thing again. Supercharge your frames of drive. Select the next star. Jump, wrench and repeat. And you just keep going until you reach your destination. If you find these kind of guides useful, please go down and hit the subscribe button below the channel. That would mean a lot to me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you liked the video, give it a like. And also next time, I'll see you guys in space.